Okay. okay. All right, now they can hear me. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you who are interested in going to Back to the Wild in May, sign up started about a half hour ago, and they can only take 60 people. So I'm going to suggest that you get on it because it's a very popular uh, thing. My mentees will be going there, and um, so will I. And anyway, uh, so that is live now, and you can uh, check the email that you got about it and go ahead and sign up for that. So I wanted uh, to thank everybody for coming out and I don't know, it was raining in North Ridgeville where I live and as we drove a couple miles south, not even to Route 82, um, the rain had stopped and I didn't see a drop of rain <laughs> all the way here. So hopefully it's not as nasty as they expect it to be and even those a little south of here hopefully won't get much. So our mentor night, uh, we do this twice a, year, uh, twice a year for those of you who are new at this. Um, our members who have been doing this for a while or have an area that they specialize in uh, will take on a few mentees and work with you for about 10 or 12 weeks. And uh, everybody is available at different times. I've encouraged our mentors when they speak tonight to, to please make clear when they are available because that is the first thing you have to look at. It could be your favorite person on your favorite topic, and if they mentor on Monday morning, and you work on Monday morning, it's not gonna work out. Find somebody else that you could tolerate at least. So anyway, I'm gonna let Catherine get started. Okay, hello, welcome um, to meet your mentor tonight. And the first of all, has everyone signed in? Because there is a mentee sign-in sheet out there. And the advantage of signing that is that it tells us that you were here and then you get kind of first dibs um, for the actual sign up for your mentor. Um, so we're very fortunate again to have 15 mentors who have uh, volunteered their time and their talents to be a part of this program. Two of them are teams, so there will be, as you see on the uh, order of presentation list, there are 13 groups, 13 uh, people you can sign up with. And they cover everything. There's going to be architecture, street photography, uh, portraiture, uh, landscape. Um, just a really wonderful array of opportunities for you to learn more about your photographic uh, journey and they will be there to, to help you along. So um, as far as questions, let's say one of the presenters comes up and you want to know something specific about them, uh, wait until they finish their presentation and then you can raise your hand and they'll answer them as, as they are uh, asked. And then at the end of the evening, when everyone has presented, uh, Bev is going to talk a little bit about signing up. And then the mentors hopefully will be able to stay around for a few minutes and you can um, go up and talk to them personally and get some other questions that may have occurred to you. In the meantime, if you have a sheet that has each of the presenters listed and you have a pen, then you can also jot some notes down on that so that you'll know what it is you want to ask and what it is you want to do. So for those of you just coming in, have you signed up for the mentee sheet? All right. Well, let's, who are we going to start with? I think uh, Dave is, there you are. All right, welcome. Hi, I'm Dave Saboric. Uh, I've been part of the club for maybe 12 years or so. When I retired teaching, I uh, bought my first camera, and a year or so later, I joined the club, and uh, been a big part of my life taking pictures, and uh, 
taking part in club activities ever since then. <clears throat> so I shoot a uh, Sony camera. I have uh, A7R5 uh, and an A6400 that I use. Uh, but the type of camera that you have uh, makes absolutely no difference difference to me. So you can ha be shooting shooting any kind of camera. Uh, I'm still like a, I'm still learning on my own. So uh, don't expect too much help there with uh, with your camera. So if you're looking for someone to to guide you around the dials of, of your camera, uh, then you want to wait probably and and. Uh, here's someone who says, I'm shooting uh, a Canon and I have this and, and I'm going to be able to show you all about your, your specific camera. Uh, as far as availability, I'm a retired teacher. Uh, I like to stay active and, and I'm pretty busy, but uh, my schedule is, is pretty wide open. Uh, I can meet uh, basically any time. So what I do is I'll meet with the mentees uh, right in the beginning. We'll meet uh, at a restaurant or a coffee shop, talk, talk for a few minutes, figure out uh, what you'd like to do and where you'd like to go. And, and uh, I'll give you my suggestions. And, and we won't set a, an entire schedule, but we'll set maybe the first couple times that we'll meet. And then as we meet, uh, you and I together, we'll decide where to go and when. So availability is, is wide open for me. Oh. I didn't know I was supposed to click. So uh, this young lady was at the uh, Day of the Dead uh, celebration in uh, east on the west side of Cleveland. Uh, it's one of the places uh, my mentees went with me this uh, past November. So I like to shoot people, but not sneaking up on people kind of shooting or, or street photography. I don't do much of that. But I love to go to, to events like the Day of the Dead. Uh, one of my mentees, Chris, suggested Carantovania. Uh, so we went to Carantovania and uh, photographed the people there. And it's, uh, I like to go Civil War encampment, medieval fair, those kind of events, and actually take photographs of people who like to have their photograph taken. They've spent a lot of time uh, creating costumes or, or whatever, and then uh, they're more than glad to have you take their picture. Uh, and I do it basically uh, only after talking with them for a while and asking them if I can take their picture, unless they're, they're in a parade or something and uh, they're open game then. Uh, so that's one of the things that I, I love to do. Uh, I like to go to parks. Uh, we went to uh, Brexville Reservation, shot the Dawn Redwoods and some hoarfrost on leaves. Uh, we went to the zoo a couple times, shot, shot the animals looking for the baby tigers and, and the baby Francois monkeys. And, and we went at Christmas time for the, for the lights. Uh, so it's a wide variety. Uh, my interest isn't in a, in a specific area. Uh, but it's a wide variety, and I'm looking uh, for maybe beginners in the intermediate level. If you're an expert, uh, you can come along and teach me. That would be fine. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, this was at uh, a Civil War program. It was uh, picture of the year, actually, people picture of the year, hung on the wall uh, one year. So it's, it's a type of uh, people photography that I like to do. So he and I talked for, for a while. And, and uh, so this was just out walking in a park. Uh, and it was, it was a really surprising picture because it was in the spring. 
uh, and there was still uh, some frost on on this little uh, little flower, or else it was a fall. I don't remember, but uh, I was surprised to see the frost. So we've gone up a couple times every year, actually, to Wendy Park to try to catch the butterfly mar migration. Uh, this one, well, I didn't know you had that one. This one. Uh, this one's on the Cuyahoga Valley uh, Photo Society or Cuyahoga Valley uh, calendar for this year. I was Miss January. So. <laughs> You have more pictures than I thought. <laughs> I went out walking with my sister and uh, her husband. He's in a wheelchair. He had a stroke. Uh, and this was just, I like the path leading through the picture in this one. Just a picture that uh, I took at that time. Uh, in the park, Cuyahoga Valley National Park. You got more? Oh, wow. Huh? I think that's Uh this one is, I think this one was Akron Zoo. I live in uh, Monroe Falls, but I travel, uh, travel all over this part of, of Ohio to take pictures. I've been out in the last two weeks to Nimbusilla Reservoir, uh, Summit County Metro Park, uh, to shoot Osprey. I was down at Funk Bottoms a couple days ago to shoot uh, Sandhill cranes and, and the ducks uh, got a nice shot of a great horned owl with, with an owlet uh, down there. Okay, I had another picture that you showed last year. That one. And that's a popular picture with everybody. It's uh, Viaduct Park in, in Bedford. So, questions? But I'm looking for somebody that just wants to walk with me in all, all these different places and, and take pictures together and uh, share w oh, what settings are you using, you know, what f-stop are you at, uh, things like that. this on? Oh, hi, everybody. I'm sorry I was late. Of all the nights for work to go late, this was it. I'm like, oh. Anyway, um, isn't the Powerball billion dollar thing tonight? I'm going to buy a ticket, quit work, and buy my Z8. Um, <laughs> so my name is Kim Boshaleski. We will have a quiz later how to spell and pronounce my last name. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know what order to go in. Do I? So do I use this? Oh, maybe afterwards. Okay. So, oh, okay. Just click the clicker. Um, I'm a retired dance teacher, current yoga teacher, and a chiropractic assistant, uh, and aspiring photographer. And um, I got into this nine years ago when I inherited my son's camera. And I thought, well, surely I can get the owner's manual out and learn how to use this. And it took me a good year and a half to wrap my brain around those three little settings <laughs> on the back. Thank God there was, um, the menu was actual pictures because I, I really like visual. Um, so I am not super advanced, but I know more than I did nine years ago. So um, I took Fundamentals, Photoshop, Lightroom. I also volunteer for the community service portion. If you've not heard of that branch of our club, that's probably one of the hidden gems. Um, and I'm going to encourage all my mentees to sign up for that because it's volunteer. You have nothing to lose, and you just go shoot events, which is amazing. And you meet some really cool people. And I actually met my current mentor, who's mentoring me for a year and a half now at one of the community service events. So um, plug for community service. So I have a Nikon D7200, two lenses, and two speed lights. Um, my main focus is people. I love people. 
I love you all right now. I just want to shoot you all So, because I love you. So I've done, over the years, a lot of race photos. My whole family is a bunch of runners. Um, dabbling in photojournalism, I guess, because I like to go to events and just kind of document. Um, garden photos, only because my husband grows amazing uh, flowers. My pets, my grand dogs. And now I have a new grandbaby who is a week old today. So um, we're going to do all newborn photography. Kidding. <laughs> I tried that two days ago and there's a lot to learn, so hopefully she won't grow up too fast. Um, I first decided to volunteer as a mentor years ago, pre-COVID, because no one was volunteering and at the time Barb Pennington said, um, she sent out a thing on the newsletter that said, if we don't get more mentors, we are going to have to cancel the program. And I had learned so much in previous years from previous mentors that I thought, well, we can't have that. So I called her and said, I don't know a ton. I know more than the beginner. So I started mentoring. Then COVID hit. So that mentor group went for almost two years. <laughs> we won't go that long, I promise. Um, so it was really um, a really great experience because when you teach, you learn. So for me, that was a, a big thing. Um, I also partnered up with Chris Bosworth. Where are you? Are you here? There he is. Hi, Chris. And he was like the technical end, and I was the artistic end, and it, it just it worked perfectly. Um, so I'm calling my group Fearless Photo because... I always tell people no one ever died from taking a bad picture. No, no one has died from taking a bad picture. And a lot of us hold back, well, we're not going to go out and take pictures until we, um, you know, learn all those dials on the back of the thing. And my whole premise is you're going to learn by going out and shooting. So I'm, I'm not going to let you sit on the couch and play with your dials. You're just going to go out and shoot. And so kind of releasing the fear so you can progress and, and move forward with all that. Um, my plan is weekday mornings. I do have two Saturday events that I've got planned just because they're such fun events and um, great photo opportunities. Um, please don't sign up for, for me just to attend two Saturday events. You're welcome to come along, call me. You know, if you're not my mentee, I don't care. Um, but they're, they're just two really cool events that I looked on my calendar. I thought, oh, we got to go do those. Um, I will take beginner, intermediate. If you're advanced and you want to come along and hang out, because I'm so fun, um, you're welcome to do that. Uh, I, I like to have fun. We, we got to have fun, people. Just got to have fun. I like to have fun, laugh, and you won't die if you take a bad photo, I guarantee. Um, my weaknesses are I'm not super technical, but that turns into a strength because I remember what it's like to not be technical, not know those dials. I think I'm a good teacher. I mean, I taught kids with two left feet for 27 years how to dance. Come on. Um, <coughs> excuse me. My strength is... I'm really good at talking to models, so I can pro you can probably put me in a crowd of anyone or anywhere, and I will talk them into standing there and letting me take their photo. Um, I'm a good little talker. I'm not shy. Uh, hang with me if you are shy, and you learn how to not be shy, because no one ever died from someone saying, no, you can't take my photo. You know, always ask. Um, I find that I am pretty good at taking flattering photos of people my age and older. Um, because we need all the help we can get. <laughs> um, so, and I'm also really good at setting up really cool field trips and places to go to take photos. Um, what I lack in experience, I make up for in enthusiasm, for sure. I'm very much into hands-on teaching. I just, also, if you are into speed lights, I'm still learning, but I'm getting better at using my speed lights. Um, so if we might take a day and just play with our speed lights. And you won't play with my speed lights. If you have speed lights, bring yours along and learn how to use them. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, let's see. My hope is to go out every other week and then every other week have a photo review. Last time I mentored, I, I had us go every single week. And some of the people were saying it was a little much. Um, it was just... It, it was a little much. So um, we will meet up before we go do anything, and we'll discuss the schedules, and we'll plan it all out. I'm a big planner. Um, so
So hold on, I have my punchline here. So if you want to have fun with your camera, release perfectionism and meet with like-minded people and just dive in with a mentor who cares. I'm your girl. <laughs> okay, here's my, here's my photos. Oh, you did them? Oh, all right. That's Laura's family. Her great, oh, that's right, it's your grandchildren. Granddaughter, oh, that's right, and the signet. So I put the significant others on the end in case they broke up so we could Photoshop them out. And they asked me, they go, why am I on the end? I go, in case you break up so I can Photoshop you out, so. Okay, so you saw the pictures. Thank you, okay. Call me, call me. Okay, so Eric, you're next. Hello, um, I'm Eric Botsky. I've been taking pictures for about 15 years, um, mostly in earnest, the last five. Um, my passion is animals and human care, particularly zoos, but um, I'll go anywhere there's a unique animal to take a picture of. Um, my plan is to go every other Sunday to a zoo, Majestic Meadows Alpaca Farm, Back to the Wild, places like that to take pictures of unique animals that are a little bit easier than wildlife, but still give you their, their own challenges. Um, I love going to zoos. I am there pretty much more than I am in my apartment on the weekends. Um, but my real passion of specific animals are snow leopards. Um, I've taken tons of pictures of snow leopards and pretty much every other animal at the zoo. Um, and the best part about the zoos is if it's raining, there's the rainforest. Or we can go in and go up and see the gorillas indoors. So, um, I live in Parma, but that doesn't stop me from traveling pretty much all over the state of Ohio for what I want to take pictures of. Um, there's always the possibility of going to Toledo and Columbus for a field trip, but it's not necessary. I know some people find that drive a little long. I know I do. Uh, but the baby tiger cubs were really cute. So um, I really wish that this was a little bit earlier in the year when it, we had snow, because I love the snow on with animals. Um, that's a picture of the baby uh, polar bear that was born last year at Toledo Zoo. I was there an awful lot, considering it's Toledo. Um, one of my specialties is making sure that if you didn't know, could you tell that any of those pictures were technically in a zoo? It's kind of my specialty. I'm good at making sure the background is blurred, not identifiable as anything other than a blurred background. Um, that's another reason I went to Toledo. That was, that is Ash, the tiger cub at Toledo Zoo. And she was adorable. Not quite as adorable as the Cleveland ones because they're a little closer, but she was adorable considering she was born a little earlier when none of the Cleveland animals were very active. <laughs> um, that's at the Akron Zoo. Again, I love snow pictures with animals. Um, he, he is not actually at the Ekron Zoo. He moved away, but he was still amazing. And if you, you're patient enough, every animal will pose for a few minutes. But you have to be patient. Um, I was at Cleveland Zoo uh, Sunday. Only person around, and the snow leopard woke up just for me. Um, I plan to do uh, reviews every, the week that we are not on a field trip, usually on a Thursday night and whatever, either in person or using uh, electronic meeting system of everyone's choice. 
I'm open to Zoom, Teams. If someone really likes WebEx, we could try that. Um, just in general, I like to want to share my tips, tricks, and general knowledge of zoos and animals and human care. Hello. <laughs> My name is Brian O'Riordan. Um, I've been a mentor as long as the program's been doing mentoring. Uh, that doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, I kind of look at it as a joint uh, project to kind of work on your ability to see things in their inner photographs that you didn't see before and uh, to try to make them better that way. Um, I work primarily one-on-one, -on -one, um, although we do have, we have done field trips, but they're usually far and few between. We have difficulty getting everybody together. So, um, but on a one-on-one -on -one basis, um, I'm more than happy to go someplace and uh, we'll, we'll take some photos. Um, I don't think at all that I, you know, I'm not going to say I can make you a better photographer. Um, I'm, that's a little arrogant. But I will cause you to look at your photos a little bit differently and um, try to give you some new perspectives. My approach to photography is I concentrate on three things, which I call composition, communication, and uh, creativity. And actually, there are two parts of photography. One's technical. One is kind of how you look at things, how you see things, what you're trying to say, messaging. Um, I will help you with the technical to the, the, to the extent that I uh, can. Um, but I, I want to concentrate on, again, how you see your own photos and what you're trying to communicate to other people. I have a series of pictures here, and they don't represent any particular interest. They represent rather a diversity of interests. And uh, it's black and white. Um, and this is uh, Eileen Donan Castle in um, Scotland. And uh, it's really kind of this nice old structure. It was built in 1913. Uh, and it's built, it's reconstructed uh, then. It had uh, been uh, built back in the 1300s and uh, in the Jacobean uh, period of time. Uh, it was blown up and destroyed. And then after World War I, one of the lieutenants came back from the war, wanted to make it a memorial and rebuilt it. So there's a story. This is a young man from the Zor reenactment Civil War. This was uh, taken in um, Custer National Park, um, or Custer State Park, I think it was, in South Dakota. And um, when I looked at it, the uh, pronghorn deer was sitting in the middle of grass, and well, gee, there's an abstract there. That's one of my favorite uh, photos. Um, I went down to Brandywine Falls and uh, was, I had my, all my equipment, had my tripod. I was going to take some nice pictures of the silky water coming over the falls and doing sorts of, I did a lot of preparation for this. And I was sitting out there, sitting everything up, and I had my camera bag lying on a bench, and this leaf fell on it. And I took that picture, and that, that's the best picture I got that day. And I've liked that for a long time. This is a different approach altogether, and it's simply trying to convey the, um, I don't know, mood of soft day on a soft lake. And then I gotta prepare you for the last one. Uh, I do experiment, and I, I play around, and I like to have fun. And um, 
this may you may not see this as being fun now if you want to know what it is turn it 90 degrees one way or the other and then just look at the top half and what you'll see is there's the stand of trees that is there but um, uh, when I put it back together, I didn't do anything about it except for two small additions, two red dots that are up there that serve as eyes. See them? <laughs> okay. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I look forward to working uh, with you, um, and anything I can do, uh, I will do. My availability is I'm retired, so um, I have a lot of flexibility. So we will find uh, places to um, to talk. We'll find places to shoot, and um, we'll get the job done. My name is Angelique Persons, and uh, I've been with the club for like. Angelique, we can't hear you. Oh, my name is Angelique Persons. I've been with the club for about, uh, approximately 12 years. Um, I shoot Nikon, Fuji, and Panasonic. My focus is um, street photography. It took me several years to determine what I really, really like. Several people have asked me, "What kind of photography do you like?" I was like, "I like all of it." So I finally come to the conclusion um, I really enjoy street photography. And the reason for that is I'm a people person. I really enjoy going out and meeting new people. And I always tell people when I go, they say, you go out by yourself. I say, if I have a camera, I'm never by myself because I've always, always meet people. I and mean, believe it or not, people will stop me and say, picture lady, can you take my picture, people? So it's easier than what people think. People think, oh, God, I'm shy. I can't approach it. But half the time, the work is done for you because people will come up to, you, to me all the time and ask me, can they? Can I take a picture and then I'll send it to them? But I would like to focus in my group. I would like to spend some time on street portraits where you meet somebody and you know you ask them, can you take their picture and everything. So that's always interesting to me, as well as candidates of people where they're interacting and everything. Or sometime I'll meet somebody and I'll say, and they're doing something interesting. So instead of just asking them, can I take their picture, I'll say to them, keep doing what you're doing. And I'll just walk around and just casually shoot them and everything. So that's one area I really like. I love uh, going to the festivals and everything. You meet some really cool people and everything. And like this year, they're having the Pride Parade. And that's always a cool place. If you're shy, go to the Pride Parade. <laughs> because, I mean, everybody really enjoys taking pictures and everything. It's just a really, really uh, fun event and everything. And um, I usually go out shooting with my Fuji camera. And because it's nice, small, and compact and everything. And I usually use some, a Prime. And sometimes I, look, I use uh, zooms and everything. So the zoom, if, uh, I recommend if you do have a zoom, don't get the real long one, but just get something like 18 to 55 and everything. So that, that's what I would recommend. Or even um, a point of shoot. Because I use, believe it or not, I use that a lot. Right there in your pocket or whatever. And if you have a tilt out screen, perfect screen to shoot because you can get the shot and nobody ever really knows that you're doing. They're thinking you're fixing your camera or something and you've actually taken uh, the shot and everything. And actually, this one here was taken downtown Cleveland, and that was actually Tito. I had no idea to my cousin. I posted it on Instagram. My cousin said, how did you get the picture of Tito? I said, Tito who? <laughs> <laughs> He's like the Indians man manager. So that was one of those. Yeah. And this one was taken downtown one day on the square where these, uh, they were like cheerleaders, and they were practicing in the water. So I thought that was kind of cool. And you see the one girl, she fell down over there in the water. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, this one was taken on my last trip last year to Portugal, and I was sitting in a um, sidewalk, inside sidewalk cafe, and the, um, I had this wine glass, and I'm like, oh my God, these people are walking through my glass. So that's how that one was captured. And this one was also captured in Portugal 
we were waiting for a bus and there were several tour buses. We had no clue which bus was which. That's why she's looking so intense. I, she caught my attention because I was like, she don't know where she's going either. So I thought that was a cool one. Okay. Okay, I think that was it. I, what, that, okay. This one here was taken in Cuba. This was a little boy who was like peeking through the door, like, you know, trying to decide whether he's going in or not and everything. So that was there. And I think... And that one there, that was one that was taken at the Pride Parade. So, yeah, but uh, I'll, I'm, I'm available. I'm off on Mondays and Fridays, and the weekends are good for me also. And, I'm, you know, so I'm pretty, uh, pretty flexible. But, yeah, anytime on the, um, the weekends or anybody want to go out like Mondays and Fridays or something like that, we can, uh, we can set something up. And I would like to meet with my group at the beginning because I'm always open for suggestions to new places to shoot and things like that. So, hope to see you. Hello, uh, my name is Rick Mills, and I'm partnering with Dennis Worth this, this spring. And um, Dennis and I have been doing this for about uh, six years now. And over that period, we've set up kind of a format or a technique in uh, how we run our uh, outings. Uh, as the display shows, we have, and I, I'm not sure if it'll start the 20th of April or the 27th, depends on when we get the mentee list. But we have five scheduled outings, and um, these are representative of what we did in the past. But we have the outings on Saturday mornings from 9 o'clock till noon, and they can be from uh, anywhere in the National Park. We also go up to the Lakeshore. We could go up to um, uh, Sandy Ridge. We'll determine those as we go. But you'll get on the Monday before we start, you'll get a sheet like this that describes what we're going to do for the outings. And then on Wednesdays, we have teams meetings where we discuss what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and what you need to bring. We list uh, the different topics that we're going to cover, uh, the locations, uh, what you need to bring. And, uh, but on the Wednesdays at 7, 7 o'clock at night is when we meet on teams and we go over everything we're going to cover. We show examples and uh, we try to get everybody up to speed as quick as we can on what we're going to cover. Um, I take care of the composition and the art side. Dennis takes care of the technical side, the use of the camera. Uh, as far as composition, we start out the first meeting talking about the basics of composition, which are line shape forms. And with that, you can create patterns, textures, reflections. And we use Dennis uses uh, the examples we show to teach how to use the camera to control depth of field or motion with shutter speed. And we try to um, start out with simple compositions and build our way up. Uh, <clears throat> this spring, we're also going to have two other guys working with us, Dave Korosek and Keto Thomas. They're going to be, uh, if anybody has um, special needs where they maybe finish the um, fundamentals class and you're not really sure of things, we'll try to bring you up to speed. If you need extra help, Dave or Keto will work one-on-one -on -one with anybody that's uh, needing some extra help. Um, as I say, there are five outings. They're either going to start April 20th or the 27th and go for five consecutive weeks. We're also going to have a couple night shots where we'll do light painting or blue hour. And... Um, it, uh, if, you, if you work on weekends or you're not available Saturday or Wednesdays in the evening, don't sign up with us. Uh, we don't really care what camera you use. Anything is fine. Um, and the uh, experience level, beginner to intermediate. And um, let's see what else. As I say, we're, the main emphasis is on composition, the, the heart or the soul of a pitcher is the control of the composition. So we'll spend uh, an inordinate amount of time on that, and Dennis will spend a lot of time on that, showing how to use the camera to make the effects you want. 
So if you want to uh, blur the background and control the, uh, we're gonna do lifestyle photography also where we control depth of field. You may take a picture of a person in front of a bridge and we'll show you how to blur the bridge and the person's very sharp or we may do just the opposite. So there's a lot of uh, different places. Uh, and usually the last one we do is night shots at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And that's a great opportunity to do blue hour. And there's a lot of other shots down there we can get. So uh, I'll ask Dennis to take it over from there. Hi, everybody. Uh, Rick and I have been doing this for uh, several sessions now, and it's worked out pretty well. Uh, Dave Korosek and Keto Thomas uh, were a couple of our mentees in the past couple of years, and they have stepped up to help us help you. And uh, they are both well-versed in operation of the camera, and uh, they will also be doing some uh, demonstrations on how Photoshop can enhance your photos. Uh, if you sign up with us, uh, you're gonna get an introductory letter uh, you'll have a schedule of our events, uh, a list of the mentees that are in our group so that you can connect with them. Uh, you'll have information on how to submit photos for our Wednesday evening Teams meetings. And you'll also get, uh, through WeTransfer, a technical document folder that pretty much covers everything that we go over in our sessions, in our field trips. Uh, it's important if you sign up with us, uh, you need to know your, how to operate your shutter speed, change your aperture, ISO, uh, how to use your self-timer, and find your histogram quickly. Uh, probably the other thing that's most important uh, as we get started, we'll be learning how to do back button focusing. It's a real benefit once you get used to doing it. Uh, Rick mentioned a few of the things that we're gonna be talking about but uh, uh, we'll be critiquing your images, if you want it, during our Teams meetings. Uh, the activity level, we're gonna be outdoors, mainly walking and possibly some moderate climbing, nothing real strenuous. Uh, if we do a, something like an Everett Road covered bridge, you're at bridge level, but you also have an opportunity, depending on weather conditions, level of the water, to actually get down either near or into the water to get shots looking at the bridge. Uh, let's see, we don't do weddings, portraits, astrophotography, or sports. There's other people in this group that are far more experienced in that. So uh, thank you for attending. Anybody have any questions? Yes? Teams is an electronic meeting format, kind of like Zoom. Uh, Eric mentioned another form, but we use the Teams platform, and you'll get instructions on how to log on to that in your introductory letter. Anybody else? Okay, thank you all for being here. Everybody. I'm Bruce Orr. This is Karen Isaac. I'm Karen Isaac. And uh, we're, we, we partnered last year for uh, the mentoring, and uh, that worked out uh, real well. It was a lot of fun, and we, we got a lot accomplished. So we thought we would uh, do that again uh, this year, too. I'll, I guess I'll start with my story. Okay. So I've been doing photography pretty much you know, ever since I was a little kid. My grandparents were, were, were travelers, and they liked uh, taking a lot of photos, so we picked up on that. And I started out with the uh, with the with the dark room and film, and uh, uh, at, at some point I lost access to the dark room, so I, I there was a gap in, in doing it. Then I picked up on digital, and uh, so that that's that's what I've been doing ever since. Uh, th this photo here was taken during our last uh, mentoring thing out at one of our outings, and it was a good example of how one minute the light, uh, you know, gives a, gives a nice interesting effect. And then, you know, just a few seconds later, the cloud came over and it was gone, and then that, that, that was not uh, so, so interesting for doing that. In terms of how we uh, like doing things, um, we, we, we try to do a, an outing every week, uh, knowing that life gets in the way, things happen, you know, whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of the intent. And then we'll also do a review during the week 
as well as the photos. And we'll upload those uh, using Dropbox, I'll load them into an editor, and we'll do some, some light edits uh, if, if, uh, if folks want to do that uh, online, so we can kind of see what, what changes can be made to, to work on the photos. So it's a little hodgepodge of everything. In terms of topics that we do, it, uh, you know, we're, we're not really locked into anything. We like doing a variety of different things. Uh, as you go through the years, you'll see that there's a variety of things. This, the last one was, uh, the duck was also taken during the mentoring thing. This was taken down at, um, in Medina. Uh, they had a nice uh, uh, Christmas tree uh, set up and uh, Christmas lights in that. And uh, there's the old Lee lamp in, uh, in Medina. So we, we like, uh, so in terms of traveling, we, well, we're, our, our, the, yeah, the two ladies in our group, one was Denise, we, we were all really far apart, so we just made it work. Once we meet with you and see where you live, we're willing to drive pretty far. It just, it's up to you guys, you know, where you want to meet. We, we've stuck close to the club. We've gone far away to Kingwood Gardens. I can't remember exactly. That's way out. Yeah, that, that was a little more out. than an hour, but generally, you know, half hour to an hour is, right. is what we want to do. So, yeah, we did some night, um, well, that isn't, wasn't from our mentoring. That, that was not was from just, the mentoring. That was just going to the Jug County Fair, and uh, that's something I like to do a lot, is just the uh, uh, doing the rides at night. That's always a, a fun one. And this is a panorama of, uh, obviously, down at the flats. Uh, it's another thing that's a uh, nice technique, if anybody's interested in, uh, in, in doing that. Um, that was, well, first of all, my name's Karen, and Bruce was my mentor three years ago? A couple years ago, he was my mentor. So um, apparently I learned enough that he was willing to take me on as a partner. <laughs> um, and so this is the second time we've done it, and we try to do a variety of things depending on what the mentees wanted to do. If he wanted to go um, do long exposure, we did a long exposure one at night. This was a Medina. Um, that was Brexville Reservation, I believe. Um, we did some long exposure that was on the square of Medina. It was really, really cold that night. We all froze, but our group is game to do whatever. So, you know, we tried a lot of different things. Um, this was Kingwood Gardens we went to. That's where I think the duck was from, too. Um, this is my thing. <laughs> so during COVID, when I couldn't work, all I did was stare out my window at these squirrels. This was not, this was at F.A. Cyberling Nature Realm, and this is in, this was in their, like they had a, it wasn't really a contest, but they picked photos. So this is in their visitor center right now, and I took it there. But during COVID, I was so bored, because I was stuck at home. My son and my husband were gone at work still. So I started taking lots of pictures of squirrels. I had a squirrel bar. I had the little squirrels hopping up on the bar stools, eating nuts. I had a Jeep, they were crawling in there, it was crazy. But so I still love birds and animals and squirrels. Everyone made fun of me at work, but I didn't care because I had fun with it. But I think we're pretty much open to, even if we haven't shot like a lot of buildings or architecture, if you want to do that, we're going to do that. You're interested in birds, nature, we'll do that. It's kind of like once we meet with you initially, we'll go over the best times to meet. We'll go over what you want to shoot. We're willing to kind of try whatever. So, you know, we've done sunsets, waterfalls, all kinds of stuff. Christmas lights downtown, we're zooming the, you know, the lenses in and out and doing crazy stuff like that. So... Anyways, in terms of availability, we, we generally on the weekends in the mornings uh, is a good time, but evenings are also are also fine. I, I'm working. With I'm not. Retired. She's not. She's retired. I'm but, not. I uh, retired early. Yeah, but we can I'll tell you about that later. We can make stuff work. We we can make stuff work. We yeah. can make times work for everybody. So yeah, we're pretty relaxed. We're pretty easygoing. We'll just meet up with you the first time and decide what your interests are and where you want to go and and when you want to meet. So. All right, thank you. Okay, I'm Chris Bosworth. Um, you heard a really wide range of people here tonight. It's pretty interesting. Oh, sorry. 
That's me. How many pictures did I see? I think five. Okay, so um, that wide range you've seen is really indicative of how our club has grown. I'm down at the beginner end, and that's primarily because I've been helping out with the fundamentals class for many years, and I've noticed over the years that there are a few people at the end of the class where they're like, didn't quite get this part, or I don't feel real comfortable. So my goal is to take where you are and get you established and firm in camera settings. I'm not great on composition, um, but I get a few things every now and I get right just by the luck of the draw. Um, most importantly, I am retired. I'm only going to be able to meet during the day, at least until fundamentals. Fundamentals starts this Saturday and goes for six weeks. So um, I won't be available for Saturdays for at least six weeks. How many times we meet is really up to you. I primarily meet one-on-one -on -one with people. I like to see um, where you are and where the gaps are in your knowledge and, and experience, and we'll work from there and try to establish a solid base. I'm uh, a West Sider. I'm not going to do a lot of traveling. We will do a night shoot. Um, I think this was done maybe on one of our night shoots. Laura was on her night shoot. Um, that's right. We had purple that night. Um, so we'll do one night shoot, but mostly during the daytime. I like to basically hang out at the Metro Parks. Uh, wh what we're shooting is not important, as important to me as you getting to understand your camera. Once you've gotten to understand your camera, we'll graduate you up to Bruce or Dennis or these other guys. Um, but I want to make sure that you understand your fundamentals. It's like fundamentals level two. Um, how many times we meet is really up to you. Generally, I've met like on an average maybe four times that are about two hours each. I find that two hours is about as much as people can absorb at one time. Um, if you want to do more, we can do more. Um, and I'll be dealing with things that all the others have talked about. What, what depth of field do you want? What shutter speed do you want? What ISO do you want? What are, the, what are good settings? What are options? Um, how do I get this darn thing to focus for me? Just the kinds of things where I know that there have been gaps with people that come out of fundamentals. Um, I think that's it. Again, daytime. Um, I've been one of the ones that have had people not show up a lot, and that's really frustrating to us. So daytimes, and we'll work in at nighttime. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. So, hi, I'm Amy Sensetta. I'm new to the club last year and then came to a mentor night just to kind of see what was going on to see if I could do this. Um, I was a staff photographer with the Associated Press for 30 years. Um, I traveled the world for them. And as an AP photographer, you do everything. You shoot sports and nature and politics and news and a lot of things I like to shoot, a lot of things I didn't like to shoot, but shoot everything. And um, but this workshop is going to be about sports because I shot an awful lot of sports. I went to 11 Olympics and Super Bowls and World Series and lots and lots of things. And what I like about sports is that it's like theater. It's like a play. There's winners and losers and boys cry and girls tear their shirts off. And, and they have cool equipment, you know, like for detail pictures. You can make just nice pictures out your car window with long glass. Um, you can do scenic type things. This is at the Derby one early morning. Reaction, that's Apollo Ono at the Olympics in Torino. And just straight up action. I, know, that, I think that's what I gave you, right? Oh no, and then Bev likes this picture. This is short track speed skater stuff. I was, when I went to the Olympics the first time and I saw curlers, I was thrown to the fact that Nike makes curling shoes. How many pairs can they possibly have to make, right? So I like all their equipment. So the idea of the workshop will be, if you're not into sports, you don't really care. It's still, I think sports photography made me better at everything else I did. I, um, 
whether it was anticipating, I was in New York for 9-11, and when I was a block and a half away when the South Tower fell, and I was looking for people in the windows with an 80 to 200, and all I, the only other lens I had was a 14, because I'd gotten rid of everything else I had to get cleaned after I'd been at the US Open Tennis. And as the top of the South Tower fell behind some other building, I switched to my 14. It was, I felt like I was at a basketball game. Long lens, short lens. Long lens for down the court, short lens for up close. So everything I did in sports helped me with everything else. Tracking birds, I went to Africa, looking at animals out in the wild, finding where they're gonna go, where they're gonna go. They're gonna go there. I'm gonna start here, but I wanna end up over there. So what I hope I can teach you is whether you wanna shoot pictures of your grandkids playing t-ball, or if you wanna shoot, um, if you're really, really already very proficient on it and you just wanna go out and have some fun, uh, it's fun. So I had to retire. I hurt my back. So I'm not traveling long distance. This is about as far as I wanted to come. I, wanted to come. I live on the east side. So everything will be on the east side. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping that if we get our mentories and time and tees, I'd like the first meeting to be on April 13th, if that's not too soon. Too soon? That's probably we'll get them. So. It might be Wednesday the 17th. These are probably going to be, it's, it's based on sports schedules. So it'll be on Wednesday evenings probably, some Saturdays. That might be about it. So if you can't come, please don't sign up. Yes. We're going to, they're going to have them. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because on the 13th, I'd like to meet um, at the Orange Library and go over some ideas, some concepts of sports photography and just how you can use what you do now in this genre. Um, and uh, then we'll go out and shoot. They have a softball game at Orange that day. They have a, a boys baseball game. So there'll be something to shoot. Plus it's not just the game, it's fans and equipment and look at everything around it. So I think it could be a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a great career. I won a Pulitzer in 93, and I thought I'd just say that. Other people usually say it, but I thought I'd say it. And I was the AP sports photographer globally back in the 90s at one point to have a contest for all the staffers. So, yeah, I, I loved it. I, I, when I got hurt, I couldn't carry the gear every day like that and sit editing for long hours. I just couldn't do that anymore. So, um, but I see pictures. I, I see in pictures all the time. That's what I see in portraits. You can do portraits at sporting events. So it'll be fun. Hello, I'm Omar. Um, it's like my third or fourth time being a mentor. I think it's the third. Um, my main focus is architecture. Uh, uh, so most of my shots are uh, architecture, cityscapes, abstracts, structures, um, just like the built environment. Um, but yeah, I like to shoot a lot of different locations in Cleveland. Uh, a lot of downtown um, locations. Uh, let's see. I um, also like to focus a lot on just compositions, um, trying to find unique compositions, creative use of your camera. This is like a vertical panorama image I captured. Um, any special gear? Um, I'm a Canon mirrorless shooter. Um, you might need a tripod or ND filter for some of these shots. Um, but most of my shots, I do not use a tripod. Um, let's see. Um, I'm available Saturday mornings for outings. Um, but there will be some opportunities to review your images. I love playing around in Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, taking any level, beginner to advance, um, I think it can help all levels, because um, I, don't, I don't use a lot of complicated camera settings. I try to keep it pretty simple and to concentrate on like a composition. 
Um, also, any if you want any one-on-one uh, -on -one editing, I'm available for that also in the evenings. So this is one time I had to use a tripod, like a five minute, like daytime long exposure. Um, probably a 10 stop ND filter, maybe a 16. Um, let's see. This is an opportunity just to use like creative camera settings. Uh, this was, I don't know, maybe a two second exposure or something where I just panned the camera up and down. Yeah, I like to use a long lens for a lot of my architecture work. This is probably, I don't know, my favorite lens right now is like my 100 to 400. Um, but you can use any lens to get some great architectural shots. Uh, this is the opposite end, very wide, probably 16, looking up at a staircase, the Garfield Memorial. Um, that's probably a 200. Um, and really, like, a lot of that's editing, but, like, maybe 15 minutes in Lightroom and Photoshop to get that look. So if you want any tips and tricks with Lightroom and Photoshop, I can help you out. Um, other than that, uh, also, if you need any help with printing your images, also, I love to print my images. I love to print really big and small cool. and making sure they're super sharp. So if you need help with printing your images, I can help you with that as well. That's it. I'll be around for questions if anyone has any questions at the end. Um, I don't know what I don't know what happened with Gary Wood. I don't know what happened with Gary tonight. He normally would be here, and I didn't hear from him. So, yeah, he's right. That's his stuff right there. Couple more. Anyway, uh, to give you an idea, Gary uh, has spent a lot of years photographing wildlife. I think since the 1970s, and over the past, I don't know, five or six years, has concentrated on birds. He usually spends some time every year in Florida, so some of the birds that you'll see here are not going to be. Uh, local, but that's okay. Um, it's, I believe a limpkin, but um, he really specializes, though he only, I think, submitted one picture with birds in flight. If you want to learn how to do birds in flight, it's, it's a process a little bit to learn, but once you get it, you kind of got it, you know? It's one of those things, and uh, he's excellent at it. He lives in the West Park neighborhood in Cleveland, and I believe is available on weekend mornings, but might be available at other times. Uh, we will be posting uh, the profiles of all the mentors and all that detailed information. They're up now. Okay, they're up now, and all that detailed information is available along with the pictures on the profiles, and there's one on each me member, one page. So, if you want to go ahead. Oh, I have it, don't I? I mean, is that gorgeous or what? I like that he got it with just a tiny bit of movement in the water. I think it really highlights it. Nice movement in the wings. I love pictures of raptors, and I've noticed this especially at Back to the Wild, and I happened to know he was there last fall. And maybe, uh, you know, if we're, I'm going to go home and zoom in on the picture and see. But that is a place that you can get your reflection and all the stuff going around in their eyeball. I don't know why it's so good there to do that. Maybe because you're not necessarily shooting through branches and, and all that that are blocking the light, but you really can get some cool pictures there. And an egret taking off. 
And I think that's his last one. Oh, no, Pelican in flight. So they're a, a slower flyer than a lot of birds, like some of the small songbirds. They're extremely difficult to capture. Uh, these guys are a good start. They're like gulls. They're easy to start with. And there's lots of them wherever you are. So anyway, Gary Wood, if you really want to get into the birds, is an excellent choice. Okay, then who's Natalie. next? Natalie's next. Is she here? Natalie's not here? All righty. Um, so let's go to Natalie. She is from Solon. She says that she is mostly available and that what she is working on is, a, uh, is going around and going throughout the city and trying to photograph anything she finds interesting. That she's also, and she's looking, would love people to join her to do that that she's pretty wide open as far as availability. And let's see. And she also enjoys ICM, which is intentional camera movement, and uh, specialty lenses like Lens Baby. And she likes to use those also for landscapes and stuff. Um, I don't have a lens baby, so I don't know how easy or difficult that is, but she said you don't need specialty lenses, but that she would really enjoys teaching about the effects that they have. That would be intentional camera movement. It's a pretty cool picture, I think. That's definitely intentional camera movement, but she did keep the uh, street light in focus. My guess, lens baby, uh, with very uh, narrow focus. Nice orchid. And more intentional camera movement, which she said she will talk to people about how to put them together in Photoshop. So like I said, she lives in Solon. Her main uh, interest is uh, photos of the architecture in Cleveland and teaching how to get around intentional camera movement. I believe she said that from the description of the picture, it was somewhere down south. It might have been um, Nashville. Does that look like anything in Nashville? I, I don't recognize it, so not somewhere I've been. And that is me. So um, I've been mentoring since what, I think 2018 when I joined the club. And I've been, I've stole my, I say in my profile, um, I stole my husband's Nikon when our kids were little 40 some years ago. And I often on was interested. I didn't like taking pictures of my kids, I can tell you that. And, uh, but I did find other things I like to take pictures of. We travel a lot and have gotten back into it big time again. This was, um, you know, people were razzing me because I often go to the full moon shots at Edgewater Beach and Everybody's saying, oh, it's the, you know, it's the first one of the year. Aren't you coming? I said, no, I'm going to go to the Badlands and get the full moon there. <laughs> so I did. And we just, in February, went on a trip to Patagonia, pretend Antarctica, and the Falkland Islands. And the pretend Antarctica part is a long story. But um, if you heard in the news about Norwegian cruise lines, not going to, yep, yeah, well, that was our cruise. So anyway, we got to go other places instead, and there was no other problems, but this was at Magdalena Island in the Straits of Magellan in Chile. It was a windswept little sandy island with not a 
bush on it. There was some grass and little scrubby bush things growing. That was it. Because the wind was blowing so hard there that that was a probably 50 shots to get a clear one. My lens, I, of course, it was a real big lens, and it was blowing constantly. I couldn't hold it still. I was happier than I thought I would be with the clear pictures, but, you know, when you're out doing wildlife, um, sometimes the weather is not spectacular. But that's okay. I got to see penguins for real. This was locally at Sandy Ridge. Last winter, there were some mute swans that arrived for a few days. We usually don't see them there. The trumpeter swans that live there don't like them, and they chase them, but they tolerated them without anybody dying that I know of uh, for a few days. And this guy was hiding behind the reeds I, the, and kept going in deeper. So there was no way to get a good, clear shot of him, so I shot him through the, the uh, reeds. Couple more penguin shots. The chick yelling for mom to please feed him. These chicks, by the way, were in a couple weeks of diving into the ocean and leaving forever. And I had a poser. This was also uh, in Chile. Uh, this bird, it's a young dolphin gull. It's the strangest name I've ever heard for a bird, but there we go. They are very large gulls. They were as big as the, as the Magellanic penguins were. And their babies were still on that island. Other places we saw them, the babies were gone. But he was playing with that rock, trying, I think, to take his first flight. And I watched him for about 10 minutes, probably took 120 pictures of him. And he kept picking it up and flapping his wings and dropping the stone. Well, he finally got airborne with the stone in his mouth. It didn't last long. He dropped the stone, he fell, <laughs> but he did get up. Last year at Sandy Ridge, we were so lucky to have a baby. And uh, the, uh, the colt is now almost a year old. He's totally on his own now, because mom and dad are probably nesting, as far as we know. They're not hanging out with everybody else. Uh, he's flying over my house all the time, and he's not with his parents, so uh, he's just beautiful. He was about six weeks old when this was taken. And that again was in Chile, uh, the Chilean fjords, and that was at sunrise. So. I do Sunday mornings to meet up with my mentees, usually every other week, or, you know, it shuffles around a little bit here and there. I try on either Wednesday or Thursday night to do a Teams meeting and go over what problems anybody had and what they do want to do with their uh, time and with their uh, editing or how maybe they could take that picture better next time. So that's it. I uh, live in North Ridgeville, and I travel around a lot. So don't feel like you're always going to be stuck out and just south of Avon. OK, so next thing up, yes. If everybody wants to take a picture of this, is, is that working? Yep. OK. Take a picture of that with your phone. It'll take you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is how you will get to where you need to be to get your mentor instruction, mentee instructions and a form that you just fill out and you hit submit. Yeah. yeah, and for the people at home, the people at home, you can do it on the screen. Uh, and it will take you directly to the site. 
There is a form to fill out. When you get there, there's some instructions, just like the ones I handed you out tonight. And, and you can hit the submit at the bottom when you're done. Please complete it. Because if you don't, I'm going to reject it and you will lose your place in line because mentees are on a first come, first serve basis. Bev, if, if they don't scan the uh, QR code, is it also on the website? Yes, on the website. Under the mentoring, uh, under the programs and then the mentoring section. Right, and that is also in your instructions sheet. Amy has something to add. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got a little nervous, so I kind of lost my place when I was talking. But um, you don't have to have super long glass to do mine. It'd be nice if you had a four. It would be really sweet, something in that range. But if you had a wide zoom, like you know, 17 to 35, and you had a, something in the 80 to 200, we could definitely get some stuff done. OK, that's all. Okay. All right, so, um, so please finish filling out that form so I don't have to send it back to you. It's information we need. When you go to fill it out, you can pick three people, three mentors. You get one. Put your first choice as number one, your second choice, and then your third choice. That way, if your mentor you most wanted in the world is full, there's a good chance you'll get someone else that you might have some interest in. I think we're done. You, uh, down for the YouTube? Yes, okay, so we're, we're done for the evening. Good. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Follow Bev's directions for the people at home. Again, either the QR code or the website. And again, thank you very much.